Hello and welcome. I'm Amrita Anshura and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Amendment Bill 2017. To discuss the issue, I have with me Professor Prem Vashisht, Visiting Senior Fellow, National Council of Applied Economic Research, and Mr. Alok Sinha, former Additional Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture. Now for the highlights. Bill empowers the centre to increase its share to 30,000 crore rupees. The bill seeks to expand the role of NABAD, specially refinance activities that will generate employment in the rural areas. The bill transfers the share capital held by the RBI to the central government. The National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Amendment Bill 2017 seeks to expand the operation of NABAD and give it more financial strength. It empowers the central government to increase the authorized capital to six times to rupees 3000 crores. NABAD is a nodal agency of the central government which supports financial institutions all across the country in catalyzing growth in sectors which are in need of investments. As the current authorized capital of the National Bank is fully paid up, there was a need to increase its authorized capital so that the central government is able to infuse additional value as needed for expanding the business operation of the National Bank. Therefore, the bill raises the authorized capital of National Bank from the existing 5,000 crore rupees. The centre can further increase the proposed amount of 30,000 crore rupees if necessary by consulting RBI. I welcome this initiative, the amendment which has been initiated um, for NABARD. Um, know that NABARD is basically refinancing agriculture and rural development. And the scope has improved over the over the years. Uh, now, agriculture, rural development require you no know, huge uh, resources. I think that there will be lots of changes as a result of this increase in the capital of uh, Navar. One, I think that it will have more inclusive financing of the non-farm uh, rural sector. So it will be more you know more and more people will take advantage of financing in the rural areas. The National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Amendment Bill 2017 amends the existing law to transfer Reserve Bank of India's share in the National Bank to the central government. RBI holds 0.4% of the paid-up capital of the National Bank and remaining 99.6% is with central government. The central government will have to give to the RBI an amount equal to the face value of the subscribed capital which is valued at 20 crore rupees. RBI's uh, role in NABARD uh, was minimum getting minimized uh, over the years. While as central government's role was increasing day by day in the NABARD's affairs. Because NABARD was being enabled to play a more developmental role than the regulatory role. In which RBI had some expertise to contribute but in the overall developmental role it is the central government's policies to be executed through NABARD and therefore it makes a perfectly uh, fine sense that central government should own up the controlling stakes in NABARD. RBI's share in the National Bank caused conflict in RBI's role as a bank regulator and shareholder in the National Bank. The amendment transferring the share of RBI to the centre seeks to end this conflict between the two. The National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Amendment Bill 2017 was introduced in the Lok Sabha on April 5, 2017 by the Minister of Finance Arun Jaitley. The proposed increase in the authorised capital of NABAD would enable it to respond to the various commitments it has undertaken. The long-term irrigation fund and the on-lending to the cooperative banks are some of the areas that will be facilitated smoothly after the amendment. With cameraman Santosh Kumar, Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. How will this allow the centre to create employment in underserviced areas? That's the question that I'm going to ask you, sir. How is going to 
really impact these underserviced areas where employment needs to be generated. And by the way, it is there in the bill that that is one of the motives of expanding Nawaz's, uh, you know, uh, financial strength. So that's why the government wants this. Yeah. If you can see there, there, I would see two components of the employment generation, income generation too. One is on farm, the other is non farm and off farm. Now, on farm would really mean that you raise the productivity and give credit to the farmers and you know their incomes go up. The other component is off farm and non farm basically and lot of non farm activities both manufacturing and services are taken up in the in, in the rural and peri peri urban areas. Mm -hmm. They are they may not be exactly in the rural areas as per definition of a rural area. Mm -hmm. Now one very interesting change that the bill seeks is it says that <coughs> rural would also cover here towns up to 10,000 population mm -hmm. and this population norm may be changed by RBI from time to time. Mm -hmm. It is a very significant uh, you know, part mm. in the bill which means that exactly what you call rural areas according to census definition people may not be willing to set up factories over there because of lack of infrastructure, power and other kinds of things. So most of the non-farm activity both manufacturing services come up close to the village or close to the peri-urban areas. Correct, correct. And that is a very important aspect. Uh -huh. So you have a strong linkage between agriculture and industry mm -hmm. and services mm -hmm. and jobs generated over there that advantage can be taken by the rural population. So that is that's one of the very important aspects. Right. right. Uh, also you uh, wanted to explain how this is, why is this needed? Oh, that is very, 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 very significant question. You see, uh, Nebar was created in 1982 under 81 Act and the capital requirement have been mentioned in the news, you know, that was only uh, that time 3000 or something. Now raised to 30,000, it was 5000 crore, mm. raised to 30. The needs of the agriculture sector have increased manifold, need for credit and especially you are not able to reach the marginal farmer, marginal small farmers. If you look at the share of credit given by institutional sources to s marginal, small, medium, large farmers, the major share goes to medium and large farmers. Oh. So they are still deprived and you forget about the no, uh, informal sources because their interest rate is very high. Very high, yeah. So I am talking even the formal sources, both commercial banking system and otherwise, the marginal farmers share is still very, very low. So it has not been able to reach there? No, that is the reality. Okay. So one thing is that now, again, you know, I would not talk implementation, maybe <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Sunat, sir, will. more yeah. on that. So, uh, so let me concentrate on the economic aspect. Yeah. That this would enable, you know, the increase in the capital of Nebard at least enables it. It gives you more capacity to lend to the farming sector and we hope that they would be able to reach the marginal farmer. Okay. Uh, that's, that's one point. Secondly, the structure of the economy has changed, undergone. You know, it is the, if you look at the income components of the, of the farmers, about 40 percent is, is coming out of, you know, the non-crop and non-livestock sector. You see, the wage component is pretty high, the non-farm component, which means this is the non-farm component of income, mm -hmm. which includes services. Mm -hmm. So, and the service sector and GDP has gone up tremendously and agriculture sector is around 13, 14 percent. Mm -hmm. Now, this change in structure gives you a signal that you reorient your credit facility to the non-farm sector. Mm. So, not only the absolute amount of credit has to go up to the agriculture sector, mm -hmm. but also the share to the non-farm sector also has to go up. Mm -hmm. And that is one reason that now Nebard can leave to, you know, land to the factories and, and services. manufacturing and they have also uh, synergized it with the uh, exactly. company laws and all that. Exactly. Uh, so, the implementation part, you were uh, uh, talking about it, sir. How, I mean, Nabad has been there for quite some time. It has made inroads. Definitely, it has uh, been able to do certain good things. But 
the purpose why this amendment is being brought in is largely to expand the reach and financial power of nabard to create all the things that the government wants it to with uh, you know employment at its base now where do we see implementation really i mean happening not happening what is your take on it right. you know let's look at it this way last year in the government and the prime minister announced that the mission of this government is to double the farmers income in 6 years time so let us take that as a first step now to implement that the the farming economy like the economy in general needs money with itself so that the money can lead to growth and the growth will lead to further rotation of that money now in the general economic sense we hear a lot about a slogan called ease of business mm. that is to say no matter how much money you pump into state bank and other banks unless there is ease of business those entrepreneurs who will take loans from the banks to increase their growth may not be may Able not necessarily so. be so successful correct in which case the money will not be in rotation in which case the basic uh, idea behind pumping more money into the banking sector will not be achieved ease of business is what is required now in the agriculture sector this is definitely a very good step it is definitely the first essential step to be taken so it is very good that the government has increased by six times the authorized share capital of nabard from 5000 crore to 30000 crore now how will it be done agriculture marketing would be the key to everything now if we see in a nutshell the market prices of wheat paddy rice milk and dairy products does not see much volatility mm -hmm. it doesn't Stability. go yeah, up yeah. and down like mm. you know onions tomatoes and, and onions and onions and tomatoes and <laughs> sugar which means that in wheat paddy rice milk and dairy product marketing is kind of assured yeah that is to say whatever the farmer produces and is able to keep as is able to save as a surplus he can sell it at a good price to the buying agency now in the rest of the agriculture sector that unfortunately is absent marketing is the need of the hour. i'll give one example there was a tremendous shortage of dal and the prices of dal was going up from say 2008 to 2014 this government took a revolutionary step in saying that there would be a good msp for pulses and that the pulses would then be bought up by fci nafed etc etc mm -hmm. and you could see that immediately acreage under pulses went up yeah the output went up and today we have a situation where dal prices are not going up yeah they have been But managed there is an obvious to it at the expense of the farmer mm -hmm. the moment the government realized that it has bought enough dal and it realized that it hadn't or doesn't have enough uh, space for storage they stopped uh, buying that dal so today the farmer who had cultivated dal, dal for the msp for the msp and of which some part of it has not been bought yet by the procurement agencies they are Frustrated, left yeah. at the mercy of the market and the market is very cruel yeah so therefore if marketing is not done then the implementation is unlikely to happen right. in the case of dal unfortunately i hope i am wrong but unfortunately the farmer might again shift from dal to something else so basically two points you brought in one is ease of doing business will heavily compromise the way nabard is going to be able to refinance yes one and second the uh, management and implementation aspect especially the marketing yes assuring it to the but you've just limited yourself to agriculture only the, this bill has expanded it to several others we'll come to that yes. point time for us to head into a break when we come back we will talk about other significant provisions of the national bank for agriculture and rural development amendment bill 2017 
Welcome back. The central government wants Nabad to undertake refinancing of employment opportunities in rural areas, medium enterprise and handloom. The National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Amendment Bill 2017 proposes to amend provisions of the micro, small and medium enterprises development law and the company's law. The amendment attempts to enable the National Bank to meet its objective of promoting sustainable rural prosperity. The bill substitutes certain provisions of the Companies Law 1956 with the provision of the Companies Law 2013. These provisions deal with definition of a government company and qualification of auditors. This will enable consistency with the current Companies Law. Part of the MSME's uh, tiny, micro, small and cottage industry now will be under the, uh, under the purview of NABAD. Now, once See, Nambad is a very, very structured uh, uh, institution it says, where it can provide um, a timely credit, timely refinance to the banks also for undertaking uh, activities for the micro as well as the uh, small scale industries uh, based in the rural areas. The bill replaces terms like small scale industries, industry in the tiny and decentralized sector with the terms micro enterprises, small enterprises and medium enterprises as defined under the MSME development law. Under the parent law, NABAD provides credit and other facilities to industries having an investment up to 20 lakh rupees in machinery and plant. The bill extends the credit and facilities to enterprises with investment up to 10 crores in manufacturing sector and 5 crores in the service sector. I believe it will ensure more smooth functioning and more aligned functioning of NABAD with the central government priorities and uh, more effective uh, implementation and this will also enable NABAD to have a uh, broader mandate for its uh, uh, work and implementation of issues on the ground, more aligned with the central government and with the state governments too because in the revised uh, financial policy of the central government, funds are being transferred more to the states. NABAD provides for regulating credit and other facilities for the promotion and development of agriculture, small-scale industries, cottage and village industries, handicrafts, rural crafts and other allied economic activities in rural area. It therefore endeavours to promote integrated rural development and secures prosperity of rural areas. The amendments in the bill enables NABAD to increase business and enhance its activities. By extending benefits to the micro, small and medium enterprises in the rural areas, NABAD will help in employment generation and development of the rural area. With cameraman Santosh Kumar, Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. Synergizing this law with company laws will help in what manner? Sir, coming to you, sir. This synergy. First, they have synergized the law and the definitions yeah. with the company law and other things. That we understand that uh, definition-wise, that needs to be synergized. So it's a it's a uh, more of a drafting kind of a uh, uh, approach to synergize it. But the big uh, empowerment of NABARD is that manufacturing services, manufacturing and services. Mm -hmm. Both will now be covered at the ground level. Yeah. And the definition that Sir mentioned yeah. of 10,000 is rural area. So, with that, do you see the money really going to these areas? And uh, how do you see uh, the whole thing panning out? You know, the way I see it, as I said, marketing is the key to everything. Now, the way the government has got marketing avenues for for example, wheat, paddy and rice, it cannot be replicated for every other crop. Because that is for the PDA system, essentially, and for which there is already an infrastructure in place. The government cannot do it for everything else, for vegetables, for fruits, or for other coarse grains. What is needed, therefore, when I say marketing, what is, and when I say ease of business, what is needed is that the expansion of the nearby canvas to cover small and rural industries would give a tremendous fillip to the initiation of food processing and agro-based industries 
that will take care of the surplus harvest of the farmer from other crops and would also ensure that when it is processed and marketed elsewhere, there would be a rotation of the cash flow. Mm. I am a farmer. I take money from my bank, which is being financed by NABAD. I must, therefore, have an avenue to sell whatever I produce. And that is not there outside wheat, rice, paddy, milk and milk products. Mm. So I think it is a revolutionary step, uh, uh, you know, foreseeing that if the farmer's crop diversity takes place and the output increases, then he must have an avenue for immediately selling his produce, which in turn would lead to further economic activities. On the uh, marketing, uh, manufacturing and servicing side, services side, that's where we need to understand. See, earlier it was, as the name says, agriculture and rural development. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, it is agriculture, rural development, manufacturing, services, and several more definitions, several more words added to it. How do you see this really working out? Because earlier manufacturing and services were not there in Nabad's brief. Yeah, good point. You see, uh, you look at the overall philosophy, <clears throat> and I come back to some fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. That what you call as, call as farm income, especially from crop component, that is definitely not going to suffice. We can talk later, you know, when you talk of doubling of income, etc. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very intelligent move on the part of the government that the critical point is going to be to go beyond crop, crop per se, I'm saying, not the linkages of crop. And as Mr. Sena just said, that linkages would be in terms of processing, mm -hmm. linkages would be in terms of marketing, linkages would be in terms of providing services to the rural sector. Correct. And the service would include you know, financial services, uh, IT related services, mm -hmm. uh, it could also include in terms of advice, in terms of, you know, uh, how do you, how do you adopt modern agriculture, mm -hmm. how do you adopt technology. So, service has a very large scope. Correct. You know, service is not just relating to computers or hmm. something like hmm. that. I get it, I get it. And similarly, those services to be provided to the micro enterprises, mm -hmm. because, you know, like as you mentioned earlier, that they may not they may not be aware of the rules and regulations they may not be aware of the you know how do you get the new technology so any consultancy is a part of service to them so this enlarging the canvas is is a very subtle move or i would say very positive move on the part of the government so so that i'll repeat the word non farm component generated in the rural areas moves up Correct. And that creates employment and economic activity. activity. Right. And that's where services are, are very really important. crucial. Exactly. And refinancing by of, NABAR of services of, services. of any kind uh, meant for rural area is going to be crucial. Good. And cooperative banks are now included. You know, especially they mentioned mm -hmm. that you would have, you know, including cooperative banks because that's another step to re-energize the whole thing because cooperative okay. banks are not able to play as active role <coughs> as uh, yeah so they would be closer to the people mm -hmm. to the farmers mm -hmm. and the and the in the rural areas so they can be they can take advantage from the neighbor you know in terms of credit oh, so it has really been yeah. expanded and Spent. included included to empower the empower. Uh, rural financing exactly so uh, on the implementation aspect yes. sir it's always a challenge. I mean, NABAD, we understand, is going to be into the uh, back-end servicing, providing support to banks who will then be further uh, giving out loans to its client, farmers or wh whoever. The big problem is the compliance, the documentary evidence, the ease of business that you talked of. Mm -hmm. The banking sector is very stringent, has got very stringent, especially after the NPA uh, uh, I mean, controversy that's going on, the banking sector is now very, very cautious. So, it wants a lot of diligence, due diligence, documentary evidence, compliances and stringent process for giving out loans. Mm -hmm. Now, you are talking of a section which is not even sensitized about economic, yeah. economy, about uh, documentary evidence, about the documents it needs. 
So how do you see it really happening? The banks will continue to get flush with funds. Now they will have to meet targets. Will they be able to reach out to all the segments of the farm or non-farm at the grassroots level and reach out to the last man in the line? Is it possible with the stringent uh, compliances? You know, with the expansion of the banking sector and its penetration into the rural areas, which has been going on at a rapid pace in the last 20 years, that by itself is not much of a problem. Of course, I fully agree with you that taking a loan and for that preparing the documentation is something that even educated, urbanized people need a counseling from various people before they start applying for a loan. That is there for sure. That could be, you know, the government has got a large rural extension services in the form of the block development offices, the BDOs and BLWs. Mm. They could be mobilized into helping the banks in the rural areas in giving out loans. However, my own personal view is loaning from banks in the agricultural sector has been going up. It has been going up at a, at a very rapid pace. So I don't think the process of taking a loan is an insurmountable step. What is insurmountable is, suppose I'm a farmer, I take a loan from you and within four to six months, my harvest is ready, I don't know where to take it. So therefore, agriculture market reforms is yes. the need of the hour. Moving on, my colleague Depali Pandit spoke to Dr. T. Huck, former chairman, the Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices, CSEP, to get his point of view. The bill increases the authorized capital of NABAD. How do you look at it? The idea is that once the authorized capital of NABAD improves, it will be in a position to make more and more refinance facilities available and also help improve the supply of credit to through of course the cooperative institutions that is what it does to the farmers. So the overall farm economy I think will get a boost as a result of this. Bill transfers RBI's share to centre. How do you look at it? No, this is basically in order to remove the conflict of interest that according to some people exists in the sense RBI is an overall regulator of the whole banking system. So RBI why should it also be an investor in the NABAD. So that part if the government you know takes over and uh, government facilitates the whole process anyway but RBI's role of regulator continues and that conflict of interest can be removed. So that is broadly the idea. Thank you, sir, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.